I like how comfortable you are, you see, because you're like, you have that real comfortable hosting thing. I got this like stiff body language. <laughs> well, let's post it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, really chill. <laughs> yeah. What's up, guys? I'm Greg. Hi, I'm Ashley. Ashley Ender has finally returned to the channel. You, you finally asked me back. Finally, I know. Jesus, I've been waiting forever. Got a few cats who are deathly allergic, <laughs> so I had to... Shave them and anyway. steal in the <laughs> saran wrap. We had to clean up this whole office for like an hour and a half yesterday. Popping some allergy pills, mm -hmm. and I'm here. Now she's here. Try not to laugh video we did for Family Guy forever ago. Still getting views, and I constantly see comments of like, when is Ashley going to come back? So now that you're here, we have to do a Try Not To Yay! Laugh for Family I Guy. I failed miserably last time. And I figured since I've seen almost every episode of Family Guy, homeboy Tyrone Magnus did cover this one, unaired Family Guy deleted scenes compilation. <gasps> so, so you haven't seen any of these? I don't know if I've seen any deleted scenes from Family Guy. Okay. So this should be a real challenge. You ready, Ash? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> now I'm really ready. Well, we Koreans do not age. We pay Cambodians to do that for us. I'm seven years old. I work for Suji. Oh. I am so proud. Oh, no. I thought I paused. This must be how Benjamin Franklin felt when he discovered electricity. No one will ever know I'm doing this weird thing. Oh, I just got the idea for bifocals. And now, a public service announcement from husbands to wives. Hello, wives. Did you know that filling up the ice trays takes only two seconds? Here are other things that only take two seconds. Turning off the light. Putting the tops on stuff. Hanging up a towel. Also, how about some sex? I'm tired of masturbating in the bathroom after you go to bed. We now return to Extreme Home Makeover, Troubled Latchkey Kid Edition. Oh, hi. I just finished my two liter of Mountain Dew. Let's head outside. When my dad ran out on us, he left all his power tools. So now I like to drill potato butt. It's not that great, but it's something. Here's an old microwave I bashed into a tree. Under the house is a good place to throw the stuff I break and kill. Okay, let's take a break and get the deaf girl to show us her hairs. I'm saying it because all you're gonna find with that thing is junk. Oh, yeah? Is this junk, Lois? Because I just found this? That can't be good for my brain. No, Peter. Stewie is not junk. Don't see that sneak! Ooh. Besides, the fat man knows what he's doing. No, he doesn't! He never knows what he's doing! Don't you remember when he gave that deposition? Look, I don't think I'm any different from anybody else. Sometimes you got time to kill in a hotel room. Sometimes there's a mirror on the wall. Sometimes you look at your own stink hole in the mirror. Push your own stuff up here. It's fine. Just you. Trying all kinds of looks. Pull one cheek to the side. Maybe both. Set up a camera. Watch it later from a different angle. Put a stethoscope on. Pretend you're a doctor. Why should that matter to anyone but me? Sir, the question was, is this your signature? Guys, <clears throat> I buried some beers in the backyard, but just such an emergency. So here we go. All right, drink up, gentlemen. Here, those aren't beers. That's the skeleton of a duck. Rufus? But Lois said he went upstate to live on a farm. Wait, if Rufus is here, then where are my beers? Honey, times are hard. I gotta take these beers to market. But Ned, we promised. I told you not to name them. <laughs> oh, no, I lost. <laughs> Restart. <laughs> we actually used four puppies for this role. The first one died of exposure. The second one apparently had cancer before we even got it, so we didn't even finish a day of shooting with it. And the third one bit a grip, who then proceeded to beat it into a paste with a gobo arm. Ooh. You can still see the crimson outline in the background of the shot. We tried to wash her down, but there's only so many days in his shoe. Fourth dog nailed it. We all cried when we brought him back to the pound. Ah. This is PBS. Funding for this program was made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. Hi, I'm you. I love TV. I make this possible. It's day three of Kohog's new ban on alcohol for anybody under 50. And if there's one thing the new drinking age law has done, it's let us know that women tell terrible stories. We now go live to Trisha Takanawa with more. Trisha? Tom, I'm standing here at an awful brunch with no mimosas. Let's listen in. Did anyone see what Cheryl was wearing at the PTA meeting? Yeah, I thought it was fine. What? I can't drink anymore? <laughs> you know what? Maybe it's the best. We both bought. I just stopped drinking and got given something bad. I'm gonna walk to the homeless. Hey, which one of you bums got liquor? Oh my god! Joe's completely paralyzed! 
says, let's eat sushi off him. That was a weird first thing to say. What? <laughs> hey, quick, how's your job search going? Not bad, but it's tough out there. Well, do you even open those links I sent you? Peter, all you ever send me are links to old men plagiarizing each other. Okay, good. So at least you're out there looking. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna keep everyone on this street safe, like Captain America. Captain America, can I see your shield for a second? Sure, here you go. He's just a guy. <laughs> we now return to Will They Eat a Deviled Egg? Weird bit. <laughs> <laughs> you laughing at me to be that. Yeah, well, anyway, we thought that since it's such a nice day, we were going to get some beers and drink outside. You want to come? Yeah, that sounds good. Let me just check with my secretary and see if I'm free. Uh, looks like you're free to uh, form, Mr. Goodred. Everybody drunk. Jeez, how many penis suppressing scraps can one guy own? Donna might enjoy trying to sneak her bottom into these jeans one cheek at a time. She can't dress wet. She gotta be dry. Bye, Glenn. See you around. Who was that? That's the box I was going through last night. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, Glenn. It's like your foghorn leghorn and all the women are chickens for your plucking. And they all say, Oh, man! Yeah, Wait, man, we have to know how winter summer ends. Yeah, this show is our whole life now. We like those guys who hang around comic book shops all day, even though they don't work there. So, uh, you need help with a delivery? Nope. Need to put any vintage comics in plastic sleeves? I think we're good. All right, well, I'll just stand in the back and play with myself over my jeans. That was really great, Jake. Really, really great. Your face is upside down, so we're not going to pick you, but thanks for coming. Come on, just change the ad. I'm upside down for peanut butter. That's one right there. Peanut butter turns that frown upside down. That's true. <laughs> I can keep going. Peanut butter is... You got two good ones. <laughs> Damn it. This has been a worse trip than my visit to the Museum of Flight. And this is the Fightin' Lil. She's a B-17, and she flew the most bombing sorties in the European theater. Huh. Interesting. And, and where is Snoopy's doghouse? That was stolen by a fat guy in a ski mask. Oh, so still no lead? Do you say you can't get nonstick? Here, this is ground powder from a rhino horn. Take two of these and watch bring it on. Wow, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't know your name. I'm just gonna make a noise. Tell me if I'm close. <laughs> no, that is my brother. My name is Caitlin. Well, thank you, Caitlin. When I get home, I'll transfer enough money so you can rebuild your town. You've all been very kind. Now, everyone hop in place and pump your fists in the air as we walk slowly to our vehicle. It's interesting with missing sound effects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll take you. I guess I can deal with it. After all, I put up with Peter always thinking it's the rise of the machines. We don't have long. <laughs> That's awesome! Oh man, I haven't been this excited since we went to that Mexican water park. Excuse me, sir. Have you had active diarrhea in the past eight days? No. Well, you're about to. Ooh. Peter, you've got to change his mind. He's got to stop taking those pills. You're right. If we don't fix him soon, it'll be a bigger disaster than... Good morning, everybody. Oh, for God's sake, man, you ruined the setup. Yeah, how come you're not wearing your bell? Did you chew it off again? It keeps me awake. And I should be allowed to enter rooms unannounced. Not while I live and breathe, man. But yeah, we'll get Chris straightened out. Uh -huh. Ah, here comes Meg. Brian, quick, let's go play tennis. Let's go play what? 
I don't know. We won't, we'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was really funny. <laughs> I'm not so sure, Mom. Even online, I've become a total outcast. Oh, my God. No more Facebook friends? No more Twitter followers? No more Instagram followers? <gasps> he without Tumblr reblogs is nothing at all. A comment on our time. And scene. We did it. We did it. We I did think it. I technically lost. <laughs> Only individual I know that <laughs> considers this a win and lose game. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be a challenge, Greg. I, Man up. I lost the challenge. The one that did it for me was the dog and the farm and then the beer. That was the one that got it for you? Yeah, I don't know why. Mine was the deviled eggs. That just made like the no eggs, sense to me. Yeah, it was so they, weird. Because also like deviled eggs, I mean, at least to me, like aren't very appetizing. It's subjective, okay? I don't like pickles. I do. But I don't like deviled eggs, though. Mm -mm. If it was a pickle, <laughs> that would be Covered funny, in hair? and I would understand totally it. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally <fine. laughs> I, I thought these jokes would be like exceptionally vulgar and edgy because they were because deleted. they're not supposed to be on. Yeah, yeah, aired. Yeah. But I was like, oh, okay, I guess just some of these bits are just not that great. But I mean, they, some of them were sad. I know, right? Yeah. Some of them were really sad. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them were real depressing. I did like the one though with Peter going on his rant in the conference oh, office. Oh god, that was so funny. That was a hard one for me not to laugh too. When it comes to Peter, like he does make me laugh the most. Well, he's got the delivery of his lines. Yeah. Are, are just uh, the best. Oh, I liked the brunch one too because that's actually super true. Hey. You're speaking for a woman right now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but like, if you listen to like girls like at brunch with their mimosas, like it's gonna be way more entertaining. <laughs> and they don't. It's just I, I oh, didn't think that was you really funny. You are not woke. You are not an advocate for women. <laughs> no, it's just. <laughs> You're saying the only way women can be entertaining is, <laughs> is if they they're drunk. The <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, they're oh, boring. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I just thought that that was really funny because if they had booze in them, I feel like at the brunch table, they're like commenting on the outfits and that girl's like, yeah, what she was wearing was fine. Yeah. <laughs> that's like probably how she really feels. I wonder why some of these were cut. I know, A lot right? of these just seem like good enough Family Guy bits to have been in any one of their many random segments that they throw in throughout the episode. Yeah, exactly. Like, are you the next peanut butter kid moment? I thought was hilarious. <laughs> that is such a funny bit. Yeah, your face is upside down, so we're not going to go So that's his son. Yeah. We've never seen him before, have we? We have. Have we? Oh my god, yes. You are not paying attention to Family Guy lore. Well, I don't I haven't seen all the episodes. Well, I've Family Guy them. is linear. <laughs> if you pay attention to their flashbacks, they all tell one cohesive storyline, all right? <laughs> you, no, no, no. It's But okay. he's but he's been in it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I haven't seen those episodes. I need to. Nah, he's a freak who cares. Oh, no. Freak. And then that poor Meg making her wear a little bell. I know what it's like. <laughs> Do you, you have one? Uh, I mean, I don't know, but you know, as a woman, you should understand, right? Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. It's awful. It's not funny when I make the joke. <laughs> but I can but say But you can say it because you're a woman. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. We'll try not to laugh, family guy. We did it. We brought you back for the main thing you were required her to be for. Oh, thank you. I hope I did okay. I feel a little sad that I lost, though. <laughs> I won't be able to sleep tonight, guys, but it's okay. I embarrassed myself on the real rejects today, damn it. I lost I'm like, on a trap video. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe, click that bell, follow Ashley on Instagram, and hey, patron of the day shout out! Chris Wamoff, our friend from Michigan. This one's gonna be a little bit different because he wanted to specifically dedicate his shout out to uh, a dear friend of his, Lisa Leggio. She actually passed away this time last year, March 15th, 2019, at the age of 40. She was an activist and she committed a good chunk of her life to making the world a better place. As a matter of fact, Chris sent me over this video. She was part of this protest and oil pipeline spill uh, in 2010 in Michigan. She logged in over 650 hours in the Sandy Relief effort. She helped an organization called Sandy Claws, where she helped people getting prom dresses for Christmas items, helped to mold remediation to poor families. She helped out in Oklahoma after some tornado disasters. Bottom line, she was extremely passionate about mutual aid and community. He did put out this Facebook post. I just wanted to read a few of the posts from uh, people who contributed to the page. One person here, Amanda Robinson, says she was always the one that was good with words. Love you, Lisa. Melissa Ray says, I am so grateful for the opportunity to meet her before she passed. I loved her fire and willingness to put herself out there for others. 
Tammy Hibner says, the way she not only had such a strong voice, but how she validated and encouraged others, I miss her. Susan Wallen said, you don't have to include this, but I, I want to. I'll tell you, she she made makes a difference in my life. She reached out to me while I was living, working in Flint and had been arrested for no good reason, April, 2017. She reached out over Facebook and was trying to meet up. The way my mind was at the time with PTSD brain, I couldn't get myself to go talk to her. I was in avoiding, exhausted, hyper alert mode. Even I go to group events, which I did low key and saw her there literally dancing around being awesome. Just her reaching out and making a connection to show support with what I was going through meant so much to me and still does. I knew she had something similar happen with the MCATS accident, so I felt like she probably knew how I was feeling. I do feel bad for not getting back to her, but also like she'd understand. I don't know. I deactivated Facebook for a long time when I got back on seeing something happened. Couldn't believe it. She courageously showed up for others to help ease suffering and show strength. She was inspiring, still is, and is missed. I wish more people cared like that. There's actually a lot of posts on this Facebook page and I've actually read every single one of them. I watched this whole video and I wish I had gotten to know Lisa. She seemed like an incredibly generous, kind, hardworking human being who always fought to make the world a better place. Someone who's been more, it's, I've been pretty private about it, but I've been more active in other ways. And what I can do in the world, I've certainly never risen up to the level of contribution that Lisa herself has done. But Lisa, I wish I had met you. I'm sorry we had to lose you. And even though you're gone, now your impact still solidifies that you are an inspiration to those you met and you're still continuing to inspire people such as myself. Chris, thank you so much for sharing the information about her and I'm glad I could share this information about Lisa to the rest of the world.